Hello and welcome to KnowledgeBank.pro. In this video, we will talk about how to build an ultimate KPI using Smart Narrative. This tutorial uh, is available to download and you can find the link to the files used in this tutorial in the description of this video. Unfortunately, I have not been very successful building a perfect KPI control uh, using existing uh, visuals from Power BI. Uh, for me, a KPI is defined as three components, having three components. Number one, I need to know what the actual value is. I need to know what the target value is. And I also would like to know the trend. Are my sales going up? Are they going down? Or are, are they about the same? There are plenty of custom visuals in the Power BI store that attempt to do a perfect KPI. I'm really not a big fan of how they uh, do the job of showing the trend. And the uh, default KPI visual in uh, Power BI uh, does not do a very good job at all. So Miguel Myers from Microsoft gave me this idea today and uh, I just got done implementing it in this tutorial and I think it's about as close to a perfect KPI as we can get in Power BI right now. So let me show you how this control works and then we'll jump into Power BI desktop and I'll walk you through all the steps necessary to actually build it. So here in the top right of my screen you see the what I call a perfect ultimate KPI control and it meets all of my requirements. Number one, I see what my sales value is. So in my case, uh, the KPI is sales. I can see the trend. So right now the trend is down and it's in red. I could see what my prior period data was, which was my target. And I can also see the growth rate. So, and the way this works, if I, for example, click on product D, it tells me that trend is down, growth rate is positive. If I click on product E, it tells me the trend is up, but growth rate is negative. What does that mean? That means that even though I sell less this period than I did with it in, within a target period, I'm still having a, an upper trend. So it's much better to have an off uh, month or off quarter where, trend, where sales are trending up than not meeting your target or forecast values and sales are trending down. So the type of formatting you see in this control is we're able to, number one, specify the trend up and down. If the trend is down, we're able to show it in red. If the trend is up, we're able to show it in blue. You could pick green. And uh, so you could see that color changes for growth rate. Uh, so there's a bunch of stuff going on in this control. And what's interesting that all this is, is a smart visual um, that we're using to build this functionality to, to, dip, to um, implement this functionality. And there's just a couple of uh, tricks and um, uh, tips that you need to be aware of to be able to build it yourself. So let's switch into Power BI Desktop and I'll walk you through all the steps that I took to build this control. So since I'm making this uh, desktop available to download on my blog, link in the description, I'm not gonna spend too much time on how this is built, just gonna give you a general idea. Basically the way this works is I'm just using a smart visual. So the way you create it, you just go insert and you just create a text box. And then um, once you have a text box, what you could do is you can click on value and you can start inserting new um, values in there. So sales is just the value there. Then I created, uh, the, I typed in the word trend, and then I inserted two, um, uh, two values, one with arrow pointing up and arrow pointing down. I will give you a little bit more details after that. Then sales word is hard coded on the next line. Next line, we have another variable that I just inserted through value. And that value is sales in the prior period which is then um, delineated or ex explained by the string below that. And then I have another line for the growth rate. What you will notice is that every time I need to have a color, I have two variables side by side. I have one variable that's in blue. So I use blue for positive and I use pink for negative. And basically I just put them side by side. And there is the only, the reason to basically to make it work is the following. The way I've implemented my growth rate or the arrows is in the uh, measures. So let's take a look at the measures. The first thing I had to do was implement a calculation to calculate my trend. I have a whole video on my channel that explains the approach to calculate the trend. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. Uh, you could search in my channel and find that video. It was um, a few weeks back that I posted it. What's important to understand is the way this trend calculation works if the trend is downward, it just it returns the down arrow. If the trend is up, up arrow. And if the trend is about the same, um, the arrow pointing to the right. The next thing I did was create a trend up measure. 
and the trend up measure does the following. It checks what my trend is, and if it's up, it returns this uh, little bit nicer formatted uh, character. You can find that character in the character map uh, in your PC. So I created one variable. So if the trend is up, it returns the, um, uh, the, the triangle pointing up. What's important, if the trend is not up, what you want this measure to return is blank, nothing. And then when we look at the trend down, it does the same thing, but it's just checking for the arrow. And then um, just for this demo, I decided not to show this arrow. I just want to show like a more be better looking arrow that looks like a triangle. And now all you need to do is if I, for example, want to add another line and I'm just going to hit enter, click on value and I could do trend up. So this is the variable that will give me trend up and you can see that this uh, icon shows up here in this window. And I just uh, want to give it a value trend up and hit save. And then if I uh, find a, um, a data point with a trend up, uh, I have this character here. All I need to do now is just give it a better color. So for example, uh, up, I'm going to pick blue. And now you see this uh, character showing in blue. If I click on a cell that's trend down, this character is just going to disappear. So now in order for me to compensate it, I'm going to put another character right next to it, uh, use the trend down, and then depending on what the data is, up or down, it's going to display one or the other. And because it displays blank um, when the trend is not what it's supposed to be, then um, e either of those characters are going to show up at the same spot. So I'll probably zoom in here so you could see a little bit better. So you could see that I, I'm using two different variables. So growth rate positive and growth rate negative. I put them right next to each other. You color each one. So uh, in the color of your choice. And then uh, depending on what the value is, the one that corresponds with the trend um, will be shown. So when the um, growth rate is positive, we see things in blue. When growth rate is negative, we show we see things in red. So right now, the um, I'm looking at product C, it's green. So uh, the growth rate is positive. If I click on product B, it's red, the growth rate is negative. And that's about all there is to it. So again, for product B, what do we know? We know that it's in red. So it's underperforming relative to last period. And that's what we see current sales are 9000 prior period almost 16,000. It's in red here, so the growth rate is uh, red, and then uh, the trend is about the same, and we can see about the same here. Now you will notice that when you're in desktop, you see that the variables that you put in have this uh, blue underline below them, but what happens once you publish this, that underlining will go away, and that just looks like a normal uh, smooth KPI. So here I am, I just switched to the browser, and you can see that underlines are gone, and this looks pretty slick. Then all I need to do is uh, I use black here just because uh, for this video, I want to make it stand out a little bit more so you guys can see it better. So you could use whatever colors you want. I added a border around it, uh, added a little bit of round to the border. So all of those things uh, are, are available to you to format whichever way you want. Uh, you could change the colors, you can change the fonts of all individuals elements of this KPI. So you have ultimate control over it. So I just want to say thank you to Miguel Myers from Microsoft again for coming out with this great idea. I'll go ahead and download the desktop file on my blog. Link is in the description. Hope you found this interesting. And I'm looking forward to see you come back very soon. Thanks. Bye.